Okay, welcome to ELTE 111, Module 14, Capstone. So you'll be working in a team, either two or three people, depending on the class, and you're going to uh, kind of put together everything that we've learned in a little capstone here, okay? Um, just to, uh, before we dive into that, we're going to go over the agenda. We're going to review the HMI. We'll do our lecture on the capstone, and then we will take the quiz over the HMI. And then week 14, next time I see you in the lab, we will dig into the capstone with your partner, all right? Um, so the outcomes are we're going to do the capstone project uh, is what we're going to do. So let's talk about, um, go back to week 13, which was the HMI. The HMI was paired with the PLC. And, it, and so it says, how was the lab? Once again, the software is just a new type of software. So kind of getting through the software and, and getting used to it. Um, in the browser and pulling up uh, your screens and doing your tags and everything it takes a while to get to but uh, everybody uh, seemed to get through and make it work pretty good um, remember when you do that you have to configure a PLC first okay and then you have to configure the HMI and then you have to associate the two together so when you went up to the network you saw it was a green line between the PLC and the HMI that means that the latter logic of the PLC can talk to the HMI and then we just use some uh, basic uh, networking fundamentals to connect everything through a switch so everything was talking. And remember, um, so the, the HMIs, human machine interfaces, are used for recipes. That's for like changing the number of uh, items you're making um, or, you know, changing the, you know, the, the type of product you're making. You, you can put, have the HMI, you can kind of reprogram the HMI without, or excuse me, you can kind of reprogram the PLC without really having any software to access the PLC. The HMI can do it. Um, event logging about alarms and stuff, event triggering can tell you everything that's going on. And then what we were using before was kind of an operator interface, interface kind of like push buttons and stuff like that. Um, ladder logic will process inputs. That's what we learned. We take our inputs, which are I0, I1, I2, I3, whatever. Those are the real push buttons and switches and everything like that. And um, it will push out, it'll solve layer logic and push out outputs, which are Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, whatever. And that's where we actually had like our real, you know, uh, solenoids or real lights and stuff hooked up to them. Those are real. And then we use some internal bits to replace memory, uh, to, to, to maybe to do memory to replace control relays. We don't really need control relays for memory anymore. We can do it fictionally, and that's like M0, M1, M2, etc. We put the HMI elements in with bits because the HMI button, it doesn't really exist. You know, a, a push button really does exist. An HMI button's kind of fictional. And so we, we disassociate it with a bit, and then we can write some ladder logic. Um, HMI and PLC tags use um, that to describe the IQ and memory locations. Um, and so, once again, I's are inputs, Q's are outputs, and M is kind of our memory bits. And, and we use tags, you know, we, we call uh, like PB1, PB2, PB3, or light one, light two, light three, or memory bit, whatever we want to do. And once again, push buttons are real field devices. HMI buttons are not real and are only visible on your screen. So that was kind of the gist of, of uh, the uh, HMI lab where we, we intermingled some real inputs, some fictional inputs on the HMI screen to turn on some real outputs, some real lights, and to turn on some fictional lights that are located on the screen. Okay, review quiz. Um, we got a quiz right here. It was over the PLC. So we look at the quiz on the PLC. It says PLCs were originally designed as replacements for relays, relay control panels. So all those big relay control panels I showed you with all the complicated fancy wiring we can get rid of that we can replace it with a plc basically the function of a plc is to make logical decisions and control outputs so yeah we take our inputs in and then we kind of solve our ladder logic and then we turn on outputs okay that's what the plc is doing modifying relay type process control circuits usually involves changing the circuit wiring yeah if you want to wire up some relay logic you got to get your screwdriver and your wire cutters out and you got to make some big changes which of the following is not an advantage of PLCs over conventional types? Yeah, PLCs are smaller. They are less expensive. They are more reliable. But PLCs are small. They're small. They do not ha handle, you know, really, really large current. And, and just for an example, if I look at a PLC right here, 
you can see the screw terminals are very small. You know, there's no way I'm going to get really, really thick wire, you know, wired into here. Okay, it's not really made for that. So if you really want a really large loads and stuff like that, you know, the PLC uh, doesn't, you know, isn't necessarily designed for a high current capacity. You have to use an interposing relay. The main difference between a PLC and a relay control system is that one uses hardwired relay control logic and the other uses programmed ladder logic. So when you got to wire it all up, you want to change it, get your screwdriver and wire cutters out. The other one, you can just change the program. The central processing unit looks at the inputs, yep, yeah, and then it solves your ladder logic, you know, your ladder logic program, and then it sets the outputs. That's what it does. Check the inputs, solve the logic, update the outputs. The output interface module connects to the output now that's your output so that's that's your that's your work that you're getting out of this so you're going to hook your loads into it lamps solenoids motor starters stuff like that so that is your outputs the symbol that contacts a normally open contact can be thought of as a normally open contact um because when you're programming that it's called an xic or examine on we we talked about that but it's been thought of you you think it or you program it thinking that it's kind of like a normally open and then it's going to um, go from false to true, you know, if something happens. The symbol right here is a ladder logic represents, it's a virtual relay coil. That's right. So the, the PLC is programmed only using contacts and coils. There's no, um, there's no middle ground. Uh, there's no, there's no symbols. There's no push buttons or solenoid symbols or anything like that in ladder logic, ladder in PLC, PLC ladder logic. It's only contacts and coils. Unlike personal computers, PLCs are, they aren't in, equipped with input and output modules. That's where we can actually wire stuff in. Equipped with control programming language, yep, like ladder logic is what we do. Um, designed for the industrial environment. Yep, they are. They're very hardened computers, so I'd say all of the above. So that was the quiz review. Um, so we're going to move on to the, to the uh, capstone, and, and this is a pretty quick uh, summary of it. And I want you to, to read it. We'll take a look at the lab, but I want you to be sure and go through and understand what's going on. But, you know, we're going to be using, you know, some of these weeks we talked about computer literacy, how to set up computers and, and how to use Microsoft Office because you've got to make a report and some spreadsheets for this. We're going to be setting up a system. So once again, we're going to be doing a PLC and HMI and computers. So we're going to be doing some networker. We're definitely going to be doing a lot of CAD in this. So our, our symbol library and our control diagrams, um, we will definitely be doing some CAD. We'll be using a PLC. We'll be using an HMI. Um, also, we are using the pneumatic stamping system, so we're going to be incorporating that pneumatic cylinder that went back and forth, you know, when, in our controls. And we have our control panel that we cut out using our CAD CAM CMC. So we're going to tie kind of kind of tie all of those things together. And it starts right here with the master control relay. So I'm going to take a look at uh, my screen right here, and I'm going to take a look at <clears throat> this drawing right here, and we're going to go over. For what it, it about for what it is. So, the parts that we need to be aware of is you know this X1 and X2. This would be coming off of a transformer, and in our system where we're hooking up. Remember that's just where we plug in to the black and the white. That's where we on our system we plug that. That's where we're getting our voltage. And across here we have 120 volts AC across here. So that's why we got to be careful that we switch that on and off and we don't hurt ourselves. We are going to have a fuse in there. Um, if we're just looking at this very top right here, this is a holding circuit. So on your drawing, you don't need the suppressor here. We just are going to use the control relay and it's going to be called a CRM. And remember when we hooked this up, I think this was 17 and this was 18 of the master control relay. Yep, I got one right here. So there's, you know, 17 and 18 is the coil that we were hooking up for this master control relay. So we're going to make a holding circuit here, all right? And so the CRM contacts of this relay were one and two, if you remember, all right? So this has two stop buttons. We've only been doing it with one. You could put two in series at hitting this or this would stop it, but let's just do one. So we're just going to have one normally closed. That's normally closed. That's normally open. And so what we do is we're going to hit start. And we're going to get a holding circuit right here. What I would like you to do, though, I think it says, is let's put a light on right here. Let's put a, let's put a, a like a like a red light or something on right here, so that if this is on, 
we're going to have a light on on the um, control panel. Um, it, it might be green. We'll have to check. It's a red or green. But we're going to have a light on on the control panel saying that the main power is on. So if I hit start, this turns itself on and the red light comes on. If I hit stop, this sh shuts off, shuts off the memory and shuts off the red light. So that's what we got. As we move down this a little bit more, this was just uh, something that we don't need. So that's not going to be part of yours. This is controller power supply. That's going to be there. This is basically your PLC. So here's my PLC right here. Your PLC is all, you know, your PLC is always going to be on. Shut these buttons. Your PLC is just always going to be on. It'll have power whether the uh, master control relay is on or off or whether, you know, we hit the switch to turn this off and on. That's just saying that the PLC is just always on because we don't want to have to it's like the PLC starts up like a computer, you know, you know, we kill the power every time. Then we have to wait for the PLC to like boot up and run through all its, its setup, kind of like when you turn on your computer for Windows. All right. Now, here is um, some more stuff. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So once again, we're not going to do this suppressor right here. OK, um, but what we are going to do is we're going to wire up our I.O um using the control relay so before what we did um if and you say you know how did we hook this up and, and i don't know if you remember but you know we had our input module and we had our output module and the first thing that we did we had our our black and our white excuse me i'll go, I'll go like this is probably easier just to do, do it on top black and white we ran the black up here to voltage and the free B was the common here to the white. And then we hooked up our field devices. That's how, that's how we were hooking them up by sourcing the output module with voltage and syncing. So, well, that's what this is showing right here. Cause this right here is my output module. And this right here is my input module. And so because this right, because this wire right here, this wire is black, you know, all the way down here. This is just a black, this is just the black wire running here. And so the black wire does go to the output module. That's this wire right here. It does go to the output module. And this wire over here is white. So, you know, this is just white all the way down to here. And it, and sure enough, the white wire does go to the input module right there. Okay. Similar to what we did. Now, the thing that we do different on this is we put the CRM on the voltage. And so unless you hit start, this doesn't close. All right. So we could have something like uh, this was one and two. The next set of contacts here are, you know, five and six. We can go like five and six right here. OK. And so when five and six close, that brings my voltage to all my devices. So that's kind of like putting, you know, um, a contact here and that would be like five and six. So that even though we switch, we switch the switch and turn on the power down here on the, on the box, we, it, it doesn't actually get power to the module unless we hit the start right here. So that, that's what this is showing right there. This has to close and then sure enough, we will get, you know, this will bring voltage to here. Now, this is how are, how are a push button and a light connected. So here I got an input sensor and let's say you're going to run other inputs into here. Like you got, you know, if you're going to, you're going to be putting in like a start button right here and you're going to be putting in, you know, a stop button right here. And those are, those are going to be your symbols and, and you know, on your input module, the way that we did it, you know, it looks very simple. Let's say you had a start and a stop or some other push buttons here, whatever you were hooking into, you know, I one, I2, I3, etc. Well, you know that because this is white, you know, all of these have to go back to black. That's the wiring that you guys were making. The other side of the push buttons have to go back to black. Well, look here. Here's the white and, and we in and, and, and uh on the input module right here, there's the white. If this is confusing you here, you can just jump this around like that to show that that's the white wire. It is going into there, or or you can see it's tied in. But there's my white. 
and here's my black. And, and, and notice the black isn't on unless that five and six is closed. So really, you know, this, you know, it's got that contact on it, just like this one does here. You know, somehow you got to tie these two, two together or you could use another set of contacts, five, six. I guess you could use nine, 10 if you wanted to, nine, 10 if you wanted to, okay? Um, and so unless you hit the start button, there, this, this is open or, or this is open. Both of these would be open and therefore you, there's no voltage to your inputs, so these will not work. And there's no voltage to your outputs. You know, this is how our light's connected. And so that's where this is showing a solenoid. You know, I, I can put another light here like this coming off of here. You know, there's my red light coming off of there. You know, any lights coming off of here, you know, just like we did here. Let's say we had a solenoid coming off of here. Because this was black, this has to go to white it has to be black to white all right so any any outputs that you put here put lights here they have to go back to white and that's what and that's exactly what this is showing here because we got black we close this we got black to the output module run into your outputs and the other side of the output has to go to the white but none of this works unless the crm is on to close that voltage to your inputs and close that voltage to your outputs otherwise nothing's going to work so when you get going this is what you will want to wire up first and if you remember when you did a control panel you had um a control panel that was kind of cut out like this and it was going to be you know, it was going to be on these feet to to uh hold it up straight right you had the first buttons which were i think there was it was power on power off and then a the light here sign saying that there's power in, in i've got lights in there and you're gonna when you push this power on button click right there all this will come on and then the power light will come on and then you've got other ones here which maybe is start stop you know, and maybe this is my system light here. You know, I've got lights for that. Start, stop, system. You'll do that second. These items here are the actual items that are get wired into the PLC. So the top ones here are relay wired. Okay. And these ones here are PLC wired. Okay. But... You have to get the relay wired working first so that this closes in order for the power for the PLC wired items to work. All right, so that's that's the, the master control relay that you and your partner will all want to try and get figured up pretty quickly. Um, picture, pictorial diagrams. So we were created to match the master control relay line diagram. And, and what we've got is you know a variety of different Kind of pictorial diagrams and, I, and you'll be creating this like i showed you right there so there's our typical master control relay because i said we're only using one stop button so you can you can generate this mcr diagram right here and when you do that on your cad you're going to come in your cad and that's where we were working over here on your on you can generate your mat you can copy and paste the symbols here and make your master control relay circuit and start putting the items on on this diagram that match up to you know what you're showing on this right here okay you got to figure out which ones will go on there now the wiring harnesses down here these wiring harnesses where the, for the plc the way that that works is we go to our cad is if i come over here and scroll over i've got a I, i've got a siemens plc right here and so you'll see that the push buttons here's my inputs this is our input so here's my first input you know right here dot zero so you'll see that i can snap in a push button going right into there and this is a plc 
and and if I look at my camera, you notice how it says C, it says CPU. This is twelve eleven. We have a, a twelve fourteen, so you could possibly edit that. But if I look right here, it says CPU twelve fourteen, and here's my inputs, and it's showing my lights, and that's the layout. And you can see that it's you know just kind of a rectangle, and that is what you'll you can draw your your PLC inputs coming into here because when I pop this up, there's the screw terminals. There's there's the terminals, just like I'm showing. You know, there's terminals there. Okay, so that's the purpose of this over here. Now you don't need you don't need these because we're not using that type. You don't need this one up here. We're not using that type. This this is what we want. And if, it, if you want to move it out of the way, and you can always do move, enter, and then select the objects like here and here. Click click enter. And you can and you can maybe move it out of the way here a little bit, you know, as long as your snap's on. And then, you know, like I said, you can come over here and when you want to do, you know, so you gotta normally close the push button, you can do copy here, here, enter, and then it, it only clicks there. And then you can come over here and it's what the first input. Let's say that was the first input. You could put it out here, and then you'll see when you do L for line. You could snap from here to here, and, and it's very small, but that's the first push button going into there. And and so the other thing that you got to do is you got to do L for line, and you can come here to here. And what does this side of the push button go to? Well, if we go back to our diagram, it you know the this is one side of the push button goes into the controller. What does the other side go to? Well, the other side of the push button it has to go back to this black wire right here okay and so you're going to have to have you know just a little common here and the way to do this when you get done is you might just you know draw this line up here with your with your push buttons coming off of it and maybe you say uh two two maybe you could say two oh god i o i say two you know crm and that's really saying that it's going to this contact right here. Something like that might work. Just so that you're going to have two different drawings. One, The top half of this is kind of going to go on the one drawing. And then the bottom half is kind of going to go on the other half. And somehow you need to show that that contact closing right there kind of connects the two drawings. All right. And, and like I said, you can, you can do it a variety of different ways. So that is... Um, a little bit of looking at you know how the master control relay and the line diagrams are going to go um also on that um right here you're going to see that you're going to do you know this kind of uh pictorial diagrams where or your schematic diagrams where you're going to actually have pictures of the allen bradley devices and and then you'll make the connections and, and this is you know like a direct hookup and so if you were to go back to this right here it says power goes to the stop button and and, and you can look here here's hot and it goes it does go to the stop button and that's how you guys connect it and it says one notice that there's a one here and a one here on either side of that because that is the one wire and then it goes from the stop to the start and look at there it is from the stop to the start and there's a two on each end of that wire so that you you can you're going to label one end of the wire to the other end of the two that way you know the potential of the wire and that was two goes from start to part of the relay so once again it's going to come here start and it's going to go to down here and what guess what that's three and three and that's what show that's what's showing right here wire three and then it does go back to the white so and then you can follow these other wires here to show how this is getting hooked up. And, and you, you, you're going to add an, a light on here. Oh, it is an amber light getting added onto here. And so this is like a layout and to help you directly connect um, based on pictures of the actual field devices. So this right here is my control relay, this whole device right here. And then these start and stop bu buttons are showing um, the contacts of this. So hang on one second. Let me grab a, a light. Um, one. 
you know, okay? And so that, what these are showing is, you know, just this contact block right here. That's that's that contact block right here. And depending on what you, kind you got, there's, you know, there's different sets of contacts here. But, you know, that is this right here, okay? And so this right here, you may have to get off of the Internet. You may have to search, you know, look for the model of this and, and search the Internet. And you'll be able to find the drawing on the Allen Bradley site. Or this relay right here, you can download the drawings from the Allen Bradley site. Also, um, I can't remember what, but here is the uh, here's the relay file. You have to explode this. So that's a, D, a drawing file, a DWG. So you can insert this in your drawing. Download and insert this. And I believe that that is possibly the relay drawing. But I think you can then find this drawing out on the internet because, it, because it's a, I mean that'd be a pain to draw that all from scratch when you can just go out to the internet and and download it and insert it and make a drawing right here so you're going to need a drawing that shows how you hooked up your master control relay like that okay um so our project management so we need to review the project and then kind of list all the tasks here so let's just let's just take a look at, the, at what the project is right here and this kind of describes your goals objectives whatever so it says pushing a momentary normally open push button okay so i, I will energize the relay so i'm just going to come over here and do this and i'll pick this all right so it says uh pushing a button so it's going to be pushing this power button right here momentarily and I let go of it so it's going to have memory the master control relay comes on and this light is going to come on if I hit stop everything goes off so it's just going to be a memory start stop start stop memory start stop it's going to turn on the relay and it's going to bring this light on okay amber lights now energy energizing the master control relay will bring the, on the PLC output module those were those contacts that I was showing you five or six then it turns on the voltage to the PLC okay and it brings on the inputs and the outputs. They're not going to be on unless the master control relay is on. All right. Um, it's going to be programmed to prevent operation of the HMI button. It says this might be the hardest part, so do this last. So just skip that part, energizing that with the PLC. So now it says push in a momentary start push in or a momentary HMI run button will cause it, the, the next one to start. So what does that mean? That means I, I'm either going to push this start or it sounds like on my HMI screen, I'm going to have HMI start. So by pushing this one that's real or this one that's fictional, it will turn on, I think, this system light. And maybe we got to put another, you know, HMI system on here, I'm, I'm guessing. And this light. So this one or this one will turn those on. Okay, now remember, these are these are only going to work if this thing's on, the MCR is on. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's what that's showing. So hit the MCR on, and then either hit this or this, and then the system will start running. Pu pushing a momentary start system button or a momentary HMI run button will cause the PLC to latch on a green light and an HMI light. So yeah, so apparently this is green. And this is, I don't know, like this green. You want to make that green as well? That's fine. Um, the green light is on, pushing another momentary push button on the HMI cylinder extend. So now we've got another button here called extend. If this green light's on and this green light, if, if these two green lights are on, and remember, they can only be on if this amber light's on first. So this has got to come on, then these come on. And if that's correct when you hit this then your cylinder will extend you guys know how to hook up your cylinder your cylinder is going to extend um will cause if you like me and i push and button will extend the cylinder once the cylinder hits the limit switch it will retract okay so when it comes out here and you guys know how you know how that works it's got that little cylinder on and it will come out here and hit the limit switch then it will retract and if i hit extend again it'll go out and out 
hit it again, in, out, hit it again, in, out. Unless this green light isn't on. If that green light isn't on and I hit this, nothing, 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 nothing. But if I hit, if I turn the HMI start on and then I hit extend, it will move in and out. All right. Um, so that's what we're talking about. Your this list the the duties of the of the capstone wiring. You're gonna have to do the MCR, the PLC sourcing and syncing, and and I'm gonna really check these as you start wiring it up. So you're gonna start with you know your relay wiring, then you can do your PLC wiring and get that working, and then finally you can add your your cylinder and your valve, you know as you as you work through this. All right. Um, all hardware devices must have a number on each end because we have those banana jack connectors. That's where, I, that's where I was showing you wire one, wire two. Um, you know, each one of these has a, a one, a two, a three, you know, whatever wires on the end to help you hook it up. And, and they're going to match your diagrams here, the wire numbers. Um, wires running directly from any load to the neutral will be white. So any, this is going to be white over here. That's a white wire because it's on the neutral. And so any anything, you know, basically this whole side here is white. So on the other side of this light, white. On the other side of this solenoid, white. On the other side of anything that's hardwired, white. And anything on the side of the control relay. This, this wire white here, which is going to be wire number two, by the way, two. These are all twos because they're all white, all right? So there'll be wire, on, there'll be twos and there'll be a white wire, all right? Um, will be white. All other wires will be red because that red means AC. So all your wires over here running on your devices and your wires on your CRM and everything, they'll, they'll be red. All right. The control will have a label corresponding to the pneumatic. So this is CRM. Then your control relay that you'll see will have a CRM on it. And I've got a labeler for this. You need to turn the following CAD generated MCR. We did that on the ladder. Device names, symbol, wired numbers, everything. P then the PLC connections. I went over that on the CAD, how that's going to be done. CAD generated pictorial diagram, which is going to, you know, once again, you're going to do this right here. You're going to go on to the web and find out the stuff that you need to hook this up. Um, a list of the static IP addresses. You're going to have a, a USB adapter, a PLC, a HMI. So you make a little uh, static IP. You have to go in there and find out what the IP addresses are and, and show me your network. The printout of the PLC ladder logic, that's easy. Once it gets work, once it gets working, uh, TIA portal will print it out. That's easy. A list of the PLC tags, you can type it up on a spreadsheet. Um, you can get it from the, the Siemens. Uh, you might be able to, to print out, and then you can kind of cut and paste it and make it look nice. Print out of the HMI screen, just be sure to print that. Um, Excel spreadsheet that lists the group activities, who is signed for each group. Uh, Excel will start showing how much time it takes so that maybe that's the next thing that we got to take a look at is that you know you're going to come in and you're going to say um you know what what is the task and, and the first thing might be wire the crm the master control relay and that might be just a priority one because you want to get it working and, and maybe you both partners want to do this so it might be you know you know sean and mike you know who's ever who's ever doing that right and then you know once that crm is wired you know you can go you can move on um you might want to say um it it said uh uh network network um i ip description blah 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 well you know once you get all, once you get all your tasks on here you might put that as like a, a task a pretty light low priority you know because maybe you can you can do that from home it you you can you can use uh, Google Docs. You know, if you guys generate Google Docs and you share them amongst you two, you can do that. And we can do that at home. And maybe that's just assigned to Sean. And then, you know, wire um, uh, wire numbers on on the on the actual wires, the ones, the twos, the threes, using the labeler. You know, getting it hooked up is high priority. Maybe this is is lower. Maybe it's a three. I don't know. You're going to come up with what it is because you have to do that while you're in lab you, you you can't do this over google docs you have to get the labeler out and do that and that might might be mike's job and and then the other thing that you're going to get here is is time you know how long is it going to wire take to wire up 
the CRM and get it working. You know, maybe it's going to take two hours or one hour. I don't know. Or and then how about listing the 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 network IP address? You know, on a spreadsheet. You know, it might take fifteen minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, an hour. I I don't know. You're going to kind of say you know how long each one of these is going to take in hours or minutes like that just to get an idea you know of what it's going to look like and you can throw this all into an excel spreadsheet and turn it in about what each partner did all right um you need an excel spreadsheet to list the parts and costs of the control panel so you're going to be getting a bin with parts in it of uh, pilot lights and control relays and fuses and all that and basically you're going to go out and create you know, that's what we did before. The item description, the quantity, the cost, the total cost, and just use eBay, Amazon, whatever, just to go find it. Now, here's another one. A Word document that lists at least five problems and solutions to those problems that the team address. Now, these need to be like engineering or uh, electrical problems that you guys had to think about to solve. It's not like um, the room was dark when I got there problem solution I turn the light on no that's not a problem and solution I'm, I'm talking about um, you know the relay kept chattering when we push the start button you know solution we accidentally wired the holding contact through a closed contact instead of an open contact and it was and it caused it to open and close and chatter so the solution was to rewire it through an open contact that that is a, a problem that you know somebody could have run into requiring an as some thought process and a solution i would like five of those as you get working through this as you try and work through it okay so th those are what's going on you need to maybe try and make a big list of all the tasks and figure out what needs to happen first and what have what's going to happen first it, and maybe that goes here. Maybe the first task is figure out what the heck we're doing. You know, priority one assigned to Sean and Mike. Maybe it's half an hour, an hour or whatever. Maybe that's the first task that that you're doing. Um, and the, and then you you're gonna you're gonna make this happen. All right. So we went through you know what what that is. Um, and you'll be getting with your partner. And you'll you'll start this capstone. I would take a look at the the lab just to be sure you understand what's going on. And then next time I see you, you're you're all in on getting this capstone to work. And when you're done with the capstone, then you will be uh, it'll be I'll open up the final exam for you. So when you're done, you're done, and then you can take the final. It says quiz then lab. There is a um, there is a quiz and it, it and it is open so go take the quiz and i will see everybody in class